And today at 5 o'clock, Amazon's buildings shape Seattle's skyline. And more seem to be going up every single day. But that might not be a good thing. So today we went to Seattle to take a hard look at the Amazon effect. Indianapolis is hoping to land Amazon's second headquarters and the 50,000 high-paying jobs that would come with it. Our Scott Swan joins us now from Seattle. And Scott, the price of progress might be more than Hoosiers realize. <laughs> That is true. Uh, you know, when you hear on its face, John, 50,000 new jobs, that sounds pretty good. But what we have found is that it's a more complex issue in terms of the idea of landing the second headquarters. You know, today we're in Seattle. It's a beautiful, sunny day with blue skies. And that's certainly how Amazon looks at its business growth, how things have been going, the fact that 20 cities are vying for this second headquarters. But I can tell you, after spending uh, two or three days in this city, you talk to people who live in Seattle, and they talk more about the storm clouds that come with living in Amazon country. Cranes reveal the business growth that is underway in Seattle. It's part of the Amazon effect in this part of the Pacific Northwest. But there are growing pains here in Amazon country. Joni Balter is a former Seattle Times columnist. She's covered Amazon for years. Traffic, oh my gosh, you know, our commutes have doubled in some cases. The place has changed and people bristle at so much change so fast. Another challenge here, skyrocketing rents. Hannah Brooks Olson is a writer, blogger, and radio host. In Seattle, we actually have sort of two classes of Amazon workers. Um, we have the, the tech people who make a lot of money and do very well. But we also have the fulfillment workers here who usually work outside of town. And those are people who work for $13 an hour. Those additional staffers cannot afford to live anywhere around here. Observers say the soaring housing costs have created another challenge, a growing homeless population. And we have seen an increase in homelessness that is extremely remarkable. And the only way to make it better is just to build more housing that people can afford. While Amazon has provided a building for the homeless, employees have been criticized for not engaging enough in their community. I will quote uh, a beloved mayor of Seattle, um, former mayor Norm Rice, who said in the piece I wrote, I don't see the aspirational goals uh, for philanthropy by Amazon yet. In other words, sort of nudging them, saying, you have a ways to go, and they do. They have a ways to go. And Scott, today you actually got a chance to go inside of Amazon? That's right. We got our behind-the-scenes tour of the Amazon headquarters. That'll be part of the coverage that we bring for you tomorrow. We also got a chance to go inside the spheres. That's the big uh, object that you see behind me. You know, most of us have maybe an, a plant in our office. They've got 40,000 plants inside the spheres. That's another opportunity for Amazon employees to go inside, bring their laptops, do email, hold meetings inside of the sphere that's always about 70 degrees. Now, coming up tonight at 6, we're going to talk about this idea of this, these are good times for Amazon here in Seattle. They're certainly seeing a lot of growth. But what happens if things go south? What would happen to the city that actually has the headquarters? This would be a story that Indianapolis leaders will want to pay attention to. That story's tonight at 6. All right, looking forward to that. The Amazon effect is definitely a very compelling story, even here for our own city. Scott, we'll see you at That's 6. Right. Thanks so much.